This little project hits my favorite three things. Cool, cheap, and saves me from having to do something every day, which is come in here, check the level, fill it up. What more could you ask for? Hey everybody, welcome back to Trial and Error. In uh, one of my more recent videos, I built a new fountain and I wanted to set up an automatic filler for it. And there are a few different options out there, mostly made for pools and things like that, that really weren't gonna work well for me and they were pretty expensive. So I decided to try to build my own setup. So I've got a 12 volt solenoid with a GH uh, garden hose connection on it. I've got two 90s, which I need to fit all of this in the box, and I don't even know if it's gonna fit, to be honest with you, we'll, <laughs> we'll see. Um, but more importantly, they have valves on them, so I don't want this thing pumping out like the full power of um, you know, your hose pressure, because it's gonna stir up a lot of dirt and debris and things in the bottom of the tank, so this way you can set it to whatever flow rate you want. I've got a bilge pump generic build switch, and I don't know if I can make this work because it's really made to do the opposite of what I need. I need this to kick on when it's down low and shut off when it's up. And obviously for a bilge, it's set up the other way around. So uh, if we can't figure this out and it doesn't work upside down or something like that, um, we can always put a relay on this to make the positive turn into a negative trigger little case to put this in because I don't think this is waterproof and even if it is I don't want it sitting out there and then I just got a couple of connections to go to PEX which I don't know if I'm gonna go to PEX or not but I figured I'd grab these just to be safe and uh, first thing we're gonna do is test on this switch to see if we can if literally if it can just be upside down and have it work the opposite way I don't think it will but it's worth a shot set up a little bench test here so this is the way you would normally mount this to the bottom of a boat uh, as your build starts to fill, it turns on. So all we're gonna do is just flip this thing upside down. So when there's not enough water to keep this thing lifted, it turns on the autofill. And as that water level comes up, it shuts off the auto. I wasn't sure if this was gonna work. I didn't know that the switch was actually in the hinge and that's great. A lot of them will use a ball in there that just makes contact so that no matter which orientation it was in, it wouldn't work, we'd have to reverse it using a relay. But this one actually uses a physical switch. So that's perfect. I'm gonna link all of this stuff in the description for you. Uh, if you're looking to do the same thing, I'll try to remember to put it in the comment section too, because I know you can't really, use, it's not easy to see when you're on your phone. So these will have a flow direction. Yep, there it is, arrow right there. wire you can't forget that yeah, little waterproof compression fittings noise float switch down here doesn't matter which terminal we go to power coming in. Run the hot. Well, not the hot, this is all DC. Run the positive to this terminal. I'm sorry, the negative to this terminal. I'm going to switch the positive. So then our other connection here, making this switch break this connection, is these two guys just get tied together. This really wet stuff, I always use these new little solder heat shrink connectors. Uh, it's a heat shrink with a seal. 
and then the center is a ring of solder. So as you heat the whole piece up, you're heat shrinking and soldering the wires together. It makes for a really good connection. Last step was probably pretty unnecessary, but I actually want to keep an eye on um, the fact that this panel is getting 12 volts, and then anytime the valve is open, because I'm not gonna be able to see the water flowing, so if there was something, some problem where it was getting hung up and staying open, um, it'll give me a little indicator there. So, not necessary, but lights are cool. So that should really do it. That's all there is to it. 12 volt power goes in. This goes down to our float switch. So that'll be the next thing we have to do is work on something that mounts this and is adjustable in height. So yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. in, water in, controlled water out, line, Ugh. float switch, I'm going to make a piece of wood or something that I can quick being easily make an adjustment to the level I want to sit at, and we're cooking man, hell yeah. This is aluminum so don't have to worry about it rusting, just drilled a bunch of holes in it, and uh, we're gonna mount it off to this rail here in the back. Oh, that's like the perfect fit. That way, this guy can just mount to this track, float up and down wherever we want our level. I like it. So I painted this up brown. That's not a finished thing. I'm just gonna put rocks, really just glue a whole bunch of rocks all over this thing to make a natural edge. And I didn't want the white showing through, so that's why it's brown. We did get some rain today, so this thing is really, really high and certainly does not need to be filled up. But I'll show you, it is working perfectly. So this video is being shot a week later than the content you saw earlier. So this has been running for a week and it's been absolutely awesome. As soon as the water level drops down, she kicks on and starts filling. Obviously once the water level gets up to the level I set, it shuts off. It has been perfect. The indicator light's great because that tells me we've got 12 volts coming out of our main pump controller to feed this system. And then the other light will kick on obviously as needed based on, you know, 
the level of the water. So it really worked out perfect. I don't have to even worry about it or think about it, which is great. Last step is just gonna be get some rocks over this piece to cover it up and everything else is done. Uh, I did also build a new lamp, which I shot a video for as well. I'll send that out in the future. But uh, really, really happy with how all of this came out. It looks really pretty and it sounds awesome. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. Any questions, comments, concerns, and or criticisms, throw them down in the comment section below me. Otherwise, have a great day.